Hello, and welcome to Echoes of Color with Jeffrey Morrison. Uh, today, we're going to do another whip and chat. And, well, we're working on Diamond Art Clubs on Golden Shores by Chuck Pinson. Alright. That. Uh, square, 29.1 inches by 21.6 inches, 74 centimeters by 55 centimeters. 48 colors and 3 ABs, uh, 136, 129, and 141. Whoa, how's everybody going? Dad did a color in chat earlier, so got that Cappy Bear done. Did a flip through of the new coloring book that I found. So, and I be coloring in a man mandala. And hopefully the camera angle is a little smoother uh, with this weapon jet <laughs> compared to that of the previous one. That was creative. <laughs> the camera kept on moving on me. But we shall get there. Alright, got my first vaccination today for COVID-19. Yeah, I... Took the shot in the left arm, so I'm right-handed, so just in case. Yeah, pretty good so far, so we'll see. Alright, still working on the sky, that same color as before, 3731P, and here we go. Hope everybody's still having a good weekend. Uh, hopefully a few people got some of the new Diamond Art Club canvases when they were released earlier today I, I just look at the preview of uh, the ones that come out yeah I, I don't go to the website I'm diamond or whatever but <laughs> yeah I don't bother <laughs> Yeah, I can wait. To get these canvases. Oh, did I just fall? I oh, sure did. And that's on the floor. Oh, there it is. <clears throat> Aha, I found you. All right. Drop and drill already. Wow. We're like two minutes in. New record. Probably shut my Wi Fi off this time. I believe I did. That's <laughs> what so caused the craziness uh, in the last whip and chat. I did try editing, like to rotate the video. But it's just the way I was holding my phone at the end there. So, yeah. It's a little topsy turvy at the end of the last uh, whip and chat. <laughs> the camera kept moving on me. So, hopefully, this angle is a little better. It's a little further away, but. The clip is just so finicky. It's like I'm lucky to have gotten the clip in this position to be able to start filming. To fight with it. <laughs> to get it where I wanted it to be. Eh, should be able to diamond paint a lot better. Now that uh, yeah, the clip's over there. Yeah, this is a hard spot on the canvas to film. Like top center. Yeah, it's usually where my clip is for the camera. So yeah. <laughs> There we go. 
drinking the last of my coffee there. Oh, a little cold. Hopefully that wasn't just coffee grounds I was tasting. Mmm, delish. <laughs> Probably gonna see a lot of my arm, maybe. Trying to cut off the glare on the canvas too, while still having light. Man, camera stuff is tricky. <laughs> Cinematography is so tricky. <laughs> Such a pro. Hopefully I can do a lot more than just this one color this time around. Holy cow. <laughs> uh, I guess there were a whole bunch of Canada geese at the pond earlier today, but that was when I was filming my color and chat down on my room, <laughs> on my desk there. Yeah, my dad was cutting the grass and then uh, a whole bunch of these Canada geese were just having a party down on the pond there. I think my dad scared them away with a tr lawn tractor, so they didn't come back. Whoopsies. Oh well. <laughs> As I mentioned, a pair of them did try to lay eggs, but something happened to the eggs. And, uh, yeah, they were, there were no successful, uh, goslings. Oh, that's nature for you. Something got to the eggs or something, so I'm not sure exactly what went on there, but that's life unfortunately, it's the circle of life, Thing, some things are meant to be and some others are not, sad to say, but for one thing that doesn't happen, another thing occurs in its place, good or bad. I'm sure to an extent, uh, Canada East probably felt disappointment. They probably felt something or knew something wasn't right. Or something just felt off when they saw that their eggs were damaged or something. Because I'm sure life in any shape or form does have a sense of feeling or empathy, even if uh, it's not directly shown to the way humans. Uh, express themselves. I'm sure animals feel love, sadness, anger, but just not in the same way we do or to the same capacity which we do as humans. Now, the ability to survive and adapt, you'd, there'd have to be some sort of mixed experience or feeling or history to that. The urge to survive or certain experience that set circumstances in motion. Kinda curious. 
that way. So yeah, now I'll just uh, diamond paint here for a bit. See what we can do. As I probably mentioned before, there's a lot of color blocking up here. Yeah, this is where the color blocking is in the canvas. Yeah. Well, I got some of the houses down here. There's color blocking, but yeah, a lot of spots of confetti where the vines were on the houses, climbing up the sides of the houses. It's definitely a mix, and the shoreline further down near the bottom. Yeah, confetti. <laughs> so yeah, this is a pretty balanced canvas for confetti and uh, color blocking for sure. But it works out well. I like either or. <laughs> In the end, it forms uh, an image. So. Yeah. Now, the confetti gives you detail. For sure, or uh, depth, or dimension, and color blocking just like accentuates the detail or dimensioning, and the lightness or darkness of color uh, depicts distance or boosts the illusion of depth on a canvas. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm no art major, but yeah, that's kind of what I have seen firsthand just uh placing drills on uh canvases. <laughs> yeah, and watching a couple Bob Ross uh painting tutorials on YouTube. Yeah, darker colors for the distance and lighter colors in the foreground, I believe, of a painting. Yeah. And it's just amazing what he could Put on a canvas within like an hour or half an hour. I'm not sure how long the episodes were of painting with Bob Ross. No, the happy painter. Yeah, you have a straightener end. Yeah, kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not aiming to get these drills perfect, it's just to crack them to a certain extent. You can also nudge drills into place slightly by nudging them in beside one another. 
to kind of recenter them. Yeah, square drills kind of nudge up against each other when you place them. Could also do a checkerboard method uh, to kind of get them in straighter. Like if you're color blocking, for instance. Yeah, I'll just kind of do it very briefly. I, I just go row by row usually, but yeah. Yeah, so you do like every other drill piece and fill it, go back and fill it in. It gives you a, a straighter placement of drills most of the time, I guess. I don't know, I, I just fill row by row. <laughs> Usually works best when you're color blogging, but yeah, I like doing row by row better. I swear I'm like writing over a drill. Could be very well be a pebble. Not sure. <laughs> Alright, sweep the floor underneath the <laughs> drafting table. And wipe the drafting table off after I uh, finish a canvas just to kind of get my oily handprints, any fingerprint marks off the canvas or off the drafting table so I can put the new canvas down here flat without any putting any dirt on the back of the canvas or whatever. Keep it relatively neat. <laughs> yeah, to take any dust off the drafting table. Yeah, it's good to freshen up your work area every once in a while. Yeah. Just in between projects usually. Yeah, that's really all I do. Our house uh, does get a lot, a little dusty. We're by a highway. And yeah, there's cement trucks and all that. Transporting uh, ingredients for cement. And yeah, we've got fields behind us. So, and whatever is on the bottom of the soles of our shoes for bringing into the house and we have a cat and our skin sheds hair hair falling out cat shedding yeah, cat litter dust yeah naturally occurring dust in the air yeah a whole bunch of things our house is just dusty like nothing <laughs> there we go. Okay, I'll pour some more drills here so I don't have to. There we go. Let's pour the rest of what's in my container here 3731 and PB. Yeah, I have an extra bag of 37, 31, so this is like, yeah, I have a good chunk of the, yeah, small chunk over here, the horizon. <laughs> it's a bit more sky left. Next chunk. But yeah, get there eventually. Yeah, I'm just taking this canvas piece by piece here. <laughs> All right, I should have. Plenty of drills to get me 
through this parcel of the P symbols, a sea of P's. <laughs> yeah, color blocking is nice for yeah, expanses of sky and confetti, yeah, offers detail for stuff on the ground, Up shadowing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, color blocking can be for like backgrounds. Yeah, places where light hits the angle of light. So if there's a segment of really bright colors, light shining upon an object or a figure on a canvas, and there'll be large segments of the same color that, yeah, the place Yeah, so each uh, color placing style has its uh, reasoning and place on a canvas. There's probably some canvases that are just confetti, period. Very little color blocking. But uh, this chalk pins and or Chalk Pinson's canvases from Diamond Art Club, at least. Well, I have a couple Dreamer designs. Well, at least one Dreamer designs Chalk Pinson. Yeah. That uh, pretty confetti heavy. Uh, it's one with like a house in the background. It has really front window. It's like a wall of windows. The side of the house is windows. It's all lit up. And there's a gazebo on the far left. And there's a river in the foreground. And a family of deer is crossing the river or stream. Yeah, and I think it's fall. There's a bunch of fall colors in it. Yeah, canvases are stored away. Yeah, especially the Dreamer designs. And the... Yeah, Diamond Art Clubs are stacked. <laughs> away because I just had them all beside me at one point and yeah I was just it was just way too much going on <laughs> I had to tidy up this corner a bit <laughs> to be able to maneuver because I was just gonna tip boxes over constantly Sky done eventually. It's at least like a good quarter of this painting. Like, yeah, I'd say a quarter. The sky takes about about a quarter strip of the canvas. No, it's a landscape. <laughs> Yeah, some people probably think it's probably too much sky. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Yeah, there's a lot of sky. 
I can agree with that. Here, I'm just going to go along the top here. Yeah, probably have to like certain colors too. <laughs> Yeah, pinks, greens, and purples, really. There's some blues in this, too. It's colorful, but, yeah. There's a lot of predominant... A few predominant colors on this canvas. Yeah, pinks, greens. Yeah, definitely greens. <laughs> Like four or five different shades of green in this. <laughs> Between palm trees and deciduous trees. Yeah, it's kind of a busy canvas for foliage. Oh, I'll pick up a drill. I'm just going to go along the top, the top border of the canvas. Yeah, it's kind of like me outlining with the uh, lines in a coloring book with marker. Kind of that same idea. And probably somewhat not too straight, but. Not the end of the world by any means. That's okay. Usually you get like a diner takeout, local restaurant takeout on Saturdays when I'm off, but they were doing an outdoor barbecue again. And uh, yeah, the main uh, diner was closed. Just barbecuing stuff and had a limited menu, I guess, again. Lo and behold, it's probably listed on Facebook that they're doing that, but just like calling and then trying to get a takeout order to support the place. <laughs> and I say, uh, uh, no. <laughs> it's just like, uh, what? <laughs> it's like, this is like my weekend off and, uh, you're doing all like a barbecue outside. Whatever you're barbecuing, it's like gotta be a certain food item. They didn't really say. It's an outdoor barbecue. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> it's like, that sucks. Oh well, let's get takeout some other time, I guess, but. Went earlier this week. Uh, yeah, with my dad home. He works Monday to Friday. Yeah. He has the weekend off, like get to hang out all three of us in the house. Or get to see each other on the weekends, every other weekend at least. <laughs> yeah, spend time together, but no stuff happens. Like I can't really freak out because people do other stuff that's. Not the usual. So you can't get too dependent on things happening consistently. 
sometimes. Yeah, I don't like when routine changes. But yeah, I don't like change. <laughs> but for something like that, I'm just not gonna totally lose it. <laughs> it's not really worth freaking out over. Yeah, it's just like, ah, oh, really? <laughs> Why? <laughs> My parents eat bacon and eggs from the diner. They get keto, gluten free, low sugar kind of thing. Trying to help keep that local diner open. There probably would have been like another diner in town, but probably could have found the number for and called. But yeah, <laughs> so, like we used to eat at that diner, that other diner in town. But oh, the service kind of yeah, is it as good? <laughs> yeah, it's just not what the place used to be. Some stuff you just don't want to change, but what you get used to, yeah, people get used to, they have the capacity to change, and then it totally changes the whole aspect of something or experience of something the way somebody else sees it yeah. yeah basically somebody else somebody else makes a choice then it affects the decisions that you can make yeah. Yeah, this cover paper is being kind of, uh, Magnet is hook ever again. Ah, how this magnet doesn't stay consistent. Oh yeah, that would have sucked the tray going. Oh, it's not the camera acting up, <laughs> or the camera stand acting up. It's like the cover page acting up and spilling a tray full of drills. Man, it's one or the other. <laughs> The other diner got renovated. It looks tighter, tidier, and streamlined, efficient. But yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't have the same appeal as the diner that we always go to. Oh. I had I. Had ordered a poutine from the diner that we could have gone to a bit ago because I just had a weird craving for poutine for some reason <laughs> just basically fries with gravy and cheese curds or grated cheese on top usually mozzarella yeah it's just <laughs> basically your salt content for a couple days in one serving yeah, yeah, it was okay though. I probably wouldn't eat that on a regular basis. <laughs> Shouldn't eat poutine on a regular basis. I usually don't have gravy. I'm usually just a ketchup guy. But yeah, tomato ketchup is basically like sugar. And lo and behold, I grew up on refined sugar, white sugar. It's 
just like a constant. <laughs> just get that sweet tooth. That essence of sugar. Sugar's got to be a really hard habit to break. Kind of like smoking. Yeah, sugar's got to be a rough ingredient to not consume. Yeah, it's just when you think you're not eating sugar, there's probably refined sugar somewhere in some of the foods that we eat. Yeah, salt's another... Uh, interesting ingredient too. Too much of that, and yeah, it raises blood pressure and all that. But we still eat salt for something. Body needs salt for something. Not sure what, but oh, I just drop another. Must have been on. Just uh, been on the edge of my fingertip there. I heard a drill go on the floor. <laughs> Lo and behold, what a shocker. Okay. I used to consume the liquid coffee whitener, uh, coffee mate, liquid coffee mate, and, uh, they had different flavors that you just pour into the coffee and like stir. <laughs> I drank like way more coffee and pour that coffee whitener in all the time. I was like, I really have to get off this stuff. I'm drinking, consuming way too much of this stuff. Yeah, I kind of kicked um, pop or soda to the curb. I don't really drink uh, Coca-Cola or Pepsi too much. Just every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah, probably still don't drink enough water. But yeah, I basically drink uh, water and uh, coffee. Yeah, I could basically say I'm a caffeine addict. So, yeah, that's my vice. Caffeine. Yeah, I don't smoke or anything or drink heavily. Just every once in a while. Yeah, there were times where uh, I drank heavily in a small period of time and immediately felt uh, the effects after. Yeah, so. Yeah, when you feel like crap the same night after going on a drinking binge and you, your body rejects it or tries to purge it from your system when you're not used to it <laughs> the same night then uh, it's probably not a recommended action <laughs> so yeah that was like the first and last night I did a crazy for drinking so learned that lesson pretty directly <laughs> Yeah, good lesson and uh Yeah, pretty direct lesson at the same time. Okay, that's thirty seven thirty one, so that's all the P. Uh
I'm gonna do X here. It's just like the last of, yeah, little edges of tree here. Just kind of doing what's uh, what's one or two. Yeah, just I'm not doing pink constantly here. Just the tops of the trees again. Just in the area of sky here. Dark out and it seems like the lights glaring. Good. Yep. Yeah, it's all good though. I can still see, but yeah, I just don't want just pure glare on the canvas. go blind from the light shining in my face like from a previous weapon chat jeez just one thing after another in that <laughs> oh excuse me oh well can you do just gotta have a quirky weapon chat every once in a while or just something just goes off kill dude <laughs> It was that one. <laughs> Bow. What can you do? It's not. This isn't. Echoes of Color isn't like a 100% serious channel by any means. And just. Just being creative and yeah. Diamond painting or coloring. Yeah. Nothing I want this channel to be too hardcore and just pretty easy going. Just want these videos to be just yeah, all we're gonna do is diamond paint. Err <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> may not have like a ton of interesting experiences but yeah it's just nice to hang out for a bit either coloring or diamond painting Never did hear back from a friend of mine that had a paint by numbers kit. So. <laughs> oh, that was another palm tree. Okay. Okay. Is that palm tree now complete? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not sure. This is considered a deciduous tree, but there's a few palm trees in this for sure, and then flowers. Okay, I got that green back in the container because I'm notorious for tipping over, spilling green drills for some reason. <laughs> All right, uh, U, capital U, seven eighteen. Just another purple. Oh, pretty cool purple. <laughs> yeah, colors are vibrant in this, of course. The canvas certainly brightens up as you put the drills down, that's a given. 718, so that's good. <laughs> okay, you. Yeah, 
this part of the background here. I'll just uh, put a few of these down. This area to kind of complete this part of the skyline. Background skyline. Or foliage. Little clusters of uh, various colors. It's really nice. If I can find a couple of canvases that have water reflections, I just really love reflections of stuff in the water. You know, a couple of really cool canvases that. Do a really good job with water reflections. Be great. <laughs> okay, not very much uh, view in that. Okay, no, it's a very brief. Transition color. Okay, left facing. Two oh nine, I think. Yeah, two oh nine. Yeah, it's another lighter purple. Literally seven drills. Yeah, it's way more than seven, but. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like just pouring seven out of a storage container. <laughs> yeah, 209. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Seems legit. Okay. That's what that color is. Light purples, dark purples, light greens, really light greens, dark greens. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Picture has a lot going on. <laughs> light shadow dimension. Distance. Yeah, this canvas has a lot going on. It's landscapes are just notorious for that. So it's really cool. Alright. Alright, I'll do right hand. Thirty-seven thirty-three, I believe. Right here. Yep. Um, lighter pink. Yeah, I think it's just literally sky now. Yep. Yeah, just sky. It's left this section. All right. Pink out here, and voila. Yeah, I'll try to do this systematically. Uh, arrows are just good color blocking of this particular color. Oh my gosh, the glare! <laughs> Alright. Oh, we're getting 
some of the square drills clicking into place. Uh, I'm placing them in between another color that I already placed. And a nice clicking sound every once in a while. This drill's adjusting as a uh, placing. Oh yeah, not to move up or something. Oh. Fluorescent lights above me and <laughs> this really bright light beside me. Oh man, what fun. Oh, I'll make do. I can still see somewhat. Yeah, let's not tip the tray towards me. Time for painting the tray towards me. At least my hand can rest somewhere on this canvas now. Now that uh, it's just sky up here. All right, cool. Try to move these drills closer together. There's slight, seems like there's slight spacing. Or it could be the fact of the canvas that's curling up too. Yeah, it's not 100% flat. <laughs> it seems like curling in the center here. Like just slightly lifting, because I just have it clipped at other, either side. It's just like that. <laughs> And draw my invisible line here so I don't yeah I have two more uh, colors after this for this guy I just yeah, let's do my barrier here where to stop placing drills helps a lot so I'm not going everywhere on the canvas just know where to pause where to stop placing drills so much easier Nice visual cue. Oh, I keep forgetting about the ice cream that's on the freezer. Uh, cookies and cream ice cream. I should eat a bowl. <laughs> Yay! There's that sweet tooth. <laughs> that sweet tooth reflex. <laughs> Ah, 53? Wow. It's been quite a rambunctious hour. I almost need another... I'll drop that pen. <laughs> that was a gift. <laughs> that cover plastic is being a fluffy. Creeping up on me. There we go. Use another one of my cover reminders at the bottom here. So my hand is like sticking to the cover paper and the cover plastic. I'm just moving it around. It's crinkling. My word. Oh. Uh. <laughs> oh, the wonder is the diamond painting. There's always going to be one thing that's just insistive that has to go out of place or something. Mm. Yeah, there's just like that 
opaque covering the nah, segments of rectangles. Nah. I just like the clear stuff. Came with the kit, and I really don't have any of that other paper, that cover material, so yeah. I'll just steal a thicker ink one. My hand sticking to clear uh, canvas cover. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, not gonna. Go ballistic over such a thing. Yeah, let's go ballistic over other things. <laughs> like annoying car commercials or something. Annoying commercials on TV. Oh, why? <laughs> You're lost in the forest with your significant other. Walking in the forest in the dark. Yeah, just get your cell phone out and uh, turn on your headlights of your car so you can find your way back. Yeah, while well, you're at it, lock your car while you're going paragliding. Yeah, just a couple taps in the... Steal your car app and... It's like, jeez, my word. Car commercial doesn't have people with their like smartphones on their hand and they're somehow operating the car or starting the car or oh man and so many like features automatic braking uh, watch what you're doing <laughs> parking assist I guess. Yeah. Usually just find a spot to drive into, but if you're in the city and you have to parallel park, you know, there's cars that can parallel park for you. I guess it somehow gauges the distance that you need and just puts it in the place for you. I don't know if uh, it can pull you out. <laughs> you can definitely get parked, but I don't know about leaving said spot <laughs> said parking spot I don't know. yeah push button start it's like all the features that aren't really like necessity <laughs> massage sheets uh, not while I'm driving ticklish is all crap as it is and putting a massage seat in the driver's seat if I accidentally turn that on it's like I move the wrong way the car's going in the ditch <laughs> it's like that. and nothing like putting like AI in a car like Siri or something I think it's a lock set or something that's in a certain car certain brand of car now Chrysler or Buick or something, GMC or something. It's a Lexa in one of them. Uh, just what you need. <laughs> what not to put in your car? <laughs> oh god, uh, voice command. Oh my. It's supposed to be driving. Heated seats, hearing steering wheel, uh, panoramic sunroof, and it's like single pedal drive for an electric car. There's a model of electric car that's like seventy thousand dollars. It's like all electric. It's like oh my word. It's probably like an upper scale electric car. I haven't really seen that commercial too much, but holy cow. $70,000 for a car. 
why we're... Well, anyway, yeah, it's basically the hour. Yeah, just the commercials that are on TV. When I do watch TV, it's just... Oh my gosh, really? Especially car commercials, apparently. <laughs> seem to bother me the most. But anyway, uh, you've been watching that. goes The Color of Jeffrey Morrison. I will put my Facebook profile name down below in the description. Uh, the URL for my Agos of Color business companion page on Facebook as well. Facebook business companion page. Yeah, just for the channel, post updates. Uh, whips that I'm working on, uh, either canvas or coloring. Could very well be paint by number eventually, but we'll see. Um, could be flexible. And uh, my Instagram. And uh, I just post photos and meditation quotes after and done meditating. I just share those on Instagram and get shared on Facebook automatically. So when the app is cooperating. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, take care of yourselves. Always a pleasure. Thank you for the support. And we'll see you again fairly soon. Bye. Take care. Mm-hmm. <laughs>